had surgeries, my daughter's had surgeries, we're just, I don't know what happened to our gene pool, but it's definitely thin. <laughs> so we are, we are a good example of that. The other thing, I, well, is that a horse? That is massive. Um, the, uh, the other thing I encourage people to do all the time is that, um, listen, it's, it's not enough to just go to the doctor. Obviously, I, I am a big proponent of getting things checked out when, problem, when you notice problems or you have symptoms, but it doesn't do any good if you go to the doctor and then the doctor tells you what you need to do and then you don't follow instructions. And again, I'll use my wife as an example there. And by the way, before you think I'm like on a track for divorce, my wife knows that I use her as the poster child for don't let this happen to you. She's well aware of that and she actually is okay with it, at least up until now. So, um, and she will, she will do the same thing. She will go to the doctor, the doctor will give her, you, you need to do this, you need to quit smoking because she has smoked since she was very young and I, I've never smoked in my life and I, my next speech next year will be about the poison monitors who are the tobacco companies, we'll talk about that. But, um, and, and then she, she won't listen. She'll, she will stop for a while and it, it is very difficult for those, I don't know how many smokers we have. It is, oh come on, don't be so shy. We have two smokers and a bunch of liars. So it is very difficult to get off smoking. Smoking, you know, the studies have shown that smoking is actually more addicting than heroin. I don't know if you guys knew that. It's, it's, that's why you don't start. Aiden, Tristan, no smoking. So he's like a plane or something. So um, it, it, my point was that, that when you do go see a doctor, when eventually you do finally buck up and go see a doctor, it doesn't do any good if you don't follow their instructions. You know, you obviously, they, they know what they're doing. If you're not satisfied with that doctor, you don't you necessarily trust that doctor or believe that doctor, and by all means, go find another doctor. But, but you're not, you're not going to find a doctor who's going to prescribe chocolate, I promise you. You're not going to find a doctor who's going to prescribe whiskey, you know. You're going to find a doctor who's going to prescribe something that you frankly don't want to do or you would have been doing it by now. But it's, it's in your best interest to do. And, and the third point I wanted to make was, Although it sounds contradictory to what I have just told you, don't always accept everything that doctors tell you as gospel without having it checked out. And I know that sounds like it clashes with my, first, my second comment, but it doesn't. Um, if you trust your doctor, if you believe in your doctor, then by all means, you follow that doctor's advice. If you're not sure, or if it's something serious to your health, then I encourage you and I urge you to get a second opinion. I'm not saying ignore the doctor, I'm saying go confirm that what they're saying is right, and when you do, then you follow their advice, okay? And I'll give you a personal example, because like I said, my family is the poster child for all these nightmares. <laughs> um, when I was 28, I suffered a herniated disc in my back. It wasn't just herniated, unfortunately. It was herniated and it was fragmented into pieces and it was hanging down my spinal cord. Yeah. So um, I had trouble walking. I, could, I, I had a really, really hard time walking. So, so bad that my doctor actually looked at my films and looked at me and said, medically, there is no explanation for how you can stand up. He said, you should not be able to stand erect right now. So, he was a neurosurgeon, a neurologist, and he said to, uh, said to me, you're going to have to give up running, which I, I ran quite a bit. You're going to have to give up weightlifting. You're going to have to get used to a sedentary lifestyle. Um, I didn't like to hear that because, as I said, I was, I was very active at the time. And so I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to go see an orthopedist. You know, neurologists, they have their specialty that they're very good at. Orthopedists have their specialty and they, they both work with backs. But orthopedists tend to work with athletes more. And I know athletes don't like to give anything up. So if I'm going to get a shot at staying active, an orthopedist is probably going to be the one who's going to work with me on that. So I went to see an orthopedist. And he checked me out and he said, look, you're going to do everything that you used to do. You're going to have some residual pain because you've had such a traumatic injury and that's going to be with you the rest of your life, but you'll be able to deal with it. But you'll be able to do other stuff, everything you do, the running, the weightlifting, just stay away from lifting straight over your head or squats because those put all that pressure on your spine. So, of course, like, you know, finding the doctor who prescribes chocolate, that's what I wanted to hear. You know, and I said, okay, great. And so I stayed with him. And it's a good thing that I did, because if I'd gone with the, the first opinion, I would never have run again, I would never have lifted any weights, I would have become you know, a couch potato, I just wouldn't have done anything, because I would have, he, I would have believed that, oh, I can't do anything. Um, but I didn't listen to him, I went through this doctor, I went through the surgery, went through spinal surgery, and um, since then I've run four marathons, 
I've run New York three times and, and Orlando, Disney. And I, I continue to lift weights and I continue to stay active. And I, you know, I have my limitations like anybody else. I know that if I do gardening, it throws my back out completely. I'm not just saying that to my wife because I don't want to garden. It really does. <laughs> um, and I, I know the things that mess me up. But my point there was, and I, and I don't want you to think that that third point takes away from the second. Serious decisions require a second opinion because doctors have their own viewpoints and they're all human and they may see things differently, but it, imagine how much that would have changed my life if I'd listened to that first doctor and said, okay, that's it, no more weightlifting, no more running, no more physical activity, but that's it. And it would have impacted me in many, many ways. So definitely get second opinions but once you do, and once you find a doctor that you trust and you believe in, it's imperative that you, you follow their instructions and you follow their recommendations because that's why you went to them in the first place. And if you don't go to them, then you kind of end up like my neighbor's father across the street. You know, we're, we all have one life. You're gambling with it if you ignore the symptoms that are telling you something is wrong. That being said, you all look, you all look wonderfully healthy. And I wish you the best. I'm glad you came out to the expo. We have a lot of stuff here for you to learn from and enjoy. And thank you so much for coming thank here to speak.